Goddess, please like this video by giving it a thumbs up. Subscribe if you are not already a subscriber. And please share the video with a friend who it may resonate with. And leave comments below. I will check back and answer them. What you need to know about the chakras is they govern our lives. They're basically like blank disks on a computer. They're basically our operating system. Hey, namaste goddess, it's Yogini Kala. I'm so glad you're here today and hope you are blessed. And so today I will be continuing the conversation about the chakras. Um, and as I mentioned, my chakra video on the root chakra has at this point about 26,000 views and is by far my most popular video. So I'm gonna be sharing more about that. What you need to know about the chakras is they govern our lives. They're basically like blank disks on a computer. They're basically our operating system, okay? And so even though they're esoteric and they are, it's not like if you cut somebody, you won't find the chakra. They're in our energy body, which of course is within our physical body. So they're esoteric. It's something you can't see. And yet it, it houses karmic information, past life information, early childhood information. Basically, it drives a lot of our lives. So I wanted to share with you about the root chakra today. I'll be doing the second chakra, Swadhisthana, and I will be talking about Manipura on the third day, okay? So I'm just gonna uh, share a little bit with you from my notes and then uh, just share from my heart. So chakra one has to do with the earth. It has to do with roots ancestral roots, as well as a sense of being rooted and connected to the earth. It has to do with grounding. It has to do with survival, survival of our physical body, survival of us as a, as a being. So really, really crucial things. The body, it has to do with food and nourishment of the body and provision, having sufficient provisions. It has to do with matter, so anything physical, like my amethyst crystal here, which I wanted to show you. It is not color treated. You guys, a lot of times they'll color treat uh, stones to make the color really intense. And usually if it's inexpensive and the color is intense, they have basically baked it. So this one has not been baked and I've had this for some time. So matter, like rocks, crystals, everything physical that we can touch, and it has to do with beginnings, okay? So that is sort of the overall of chakra one. So let's talk about trauma and that first chakra, okay? And I hope this doesn't trigger you. Make sure you feel comfortable that you're in a, a space where you can think about or hear some of these things. So early childhood trauma, early childhood instability, you guys, in the family life will um, have an effect on the first chakra. So in my case, for example, I uh, was born in Jamaica and my mom immigrated probably when I was around seven or eight. And, um, you know, that trauma of like having your mother leave when you can't really quite understand if that ever happened to you, if you had your mom or your dad leave when you were young, um, that is traumatic because a child, you don't really understand where, where'd they go? <laughs> They're not here. So where are they? You know? So if you've had that like instability in the home, moving a lot when you were young, changing homes, even if you were, you know, pre-verbal, right? You knew on some level, you're in a different space, you're in a different room. You could perhaps feel the stress of your caregivers, you, but you didn't know what it was. These are all things that affect the first chakra. So like I said, my mom actually immigrated to Canada to work. And so leaving me behind uh, in the care of another woman who was sort of then like my, my you know, my other mom, but my, my mom who I knew was gone, you know, so that is traumatic for a child. There are actually pictures of me, you guys, at that age, and I don't know where this picture is, and I literally have dark circles under my eyes. Now, I'm not going to talk about what Western medicine is just like, oh, it's capillary showing. Uh, in Chinese medicine, that is linked with the kidneys and fear and fatigue. 
Uh, yes, some people naturally have that, and we would still say it reflects that kidney meridian energy. So as a little child, I don't have dark circles now, and I'm much older, but here as a little child, I had dark circles under my eyes, and my little shoulders were up like this in the photo. I looked afraid. My mom had left. And looking back at that photo decades later, I was like, wow, you could see this little girl was was scared and unhappy. So, you know, journal about, think about if you've had that frequent moving, a mom or a dad or your caregiver leaving, dying, disappearing, um, frequent sense of not having sufficient provision. So sufficient food or money. You might have heard your parents talking about it and you know, even if you don't quite understand what they were saying, you knew that there was fear, you could feel it. Maybe there was anger. And so as a little child, we tend to take on that responsibility because we don't, we don't know any better. We think everything is literally about us because, well, it is, <laughs> you know, when you're a little kid and for some people forever. But so that can really cause harm to that first chakra. And so then that what that would lead to as a result is things like you may be very financially successful and yet there could be a sense of scarcity of fear of not having enough so it doesn't mean necessarily that you're impoverished but that you can still have money you may have just really push to do that but it can come from a fearful place and a, a place of feeling like you never quite have enough that you can never really relax and you never sort of just really enjoy what you have, what you do have. Um, it can show up as then, you know, compulsive activity, compulsive things to make yourself try to feel safe. So um, it could be things like compulsive shopping or, or comp compulsive storing of things, keeping of things, right? Holding on to things so that there's a sense always that you'll have enough, right? It's coming from that fear. So the, the negative aspect of the first chakra is fear, is feeling that we don't belong here, that we don't have a right to have, to be, and that translates very often as money. So for many of us, it can translate as under earning or an inability to keep the money that you make. You, you spend it, or even, this is strange, I know this has happened to some of you, you'll get a certain amount of money and then literally something will happen that takes that exact amount of money. And that seems strange because it's like, how, I, how could I have any, um, you know, how could I be doing that? And yet it's amazing when we do have abundance blocks, you'll literally say you'll make an extra 500 and then your dog gets sick and the vet bill is 495, okay? Things like that, I've seen it in myself, I've seen it with friends. So the root chakra is super, super important. Super, super important and it affects all the other chakras because as I said, it's like a tree, right? Those roots, if the roots of the tree are not healthy, the whole tree won't grow strong, it won't blossom, it won't flower. So in my course coming up, Healing the Chakras, Power, sex and money will be dealing with the first second and third chakras we will do practices together in the coaching session in the group coaching session and then you'll be given very specific homework that you can do to help strengthen heal and nourish this chakra so that it is open energized and so let's just do a really brief meditation okay to try to tap into that energy so come to sitting goddess and this is stuff that's really important for women. And so women who, as I always say now, want to thrive past 45. You don't have to be 45 and up to take the course. But when I think of my audience, I'm thinking of women who have lived quite a bit of their life and are dealing with stress, anxiety, even if they're successful. You can be very successful in your career, in your relationships, and still suffer from anxiety, still suffer from stress, and definitely suffer from burnout. Okay, so women who want to overcome that and come out the other side and really enjoy and thrive. So let's just focus on the first chakra. We'll just do a brief meditation and then I'll share with you about a webinar I'll be doing upcoming. Tune in, goddess. Take three deep breaths through the nose, in, out through the mouth, and blow that breath out slowly. We're just doing it through the mouth because we can really control the breath there. 
three times in this short practice. I immediately feel connected and inspired as I take in that inhalation, letting go as you breathe out. Feel your body. For me, it's fairly easy to sense into the body, but I know for some of you, it may be very hard to actually feel your body. I'll put a link to my body scan meditation and some relaxations that I have. Assuming you're able to do that, to really sense and feel your body, the sensations in your body, the weight of your body, the contact of your body with the ground, with the chair you're sitting on, feel your feet in contact with the ground. If you're sitting cross-legged, feel your legs in contact with the surface beneath you. And then just to tune in briefly to this first chakra, to Muladhara, feel your tailbone, the base of your spine, the very, very bottom of the spine. Breathe in, breathe out. Between the tailbone, bring awareness, and also between the area between the genitals and the anus, the perineum area. Somewhere there between the perineum, the tailbone, you will perhaps begin to feel warmth, tingling, pulsation. Letting yourself drop deeply inward this does take practice, goddess, so it's okay if you don't feel very much. I have been practicing yoga for over 20 years, and so if you practice a mind-body connecting practice or you meditate, this will be much easier. Just feel the warmth there. Feel the sensations, the area of the root. And as you continue to do that, I'm just going to read briefly some wonderful affirmations for you. And the, the root chakra is about, I am here. I belong here. I am worthy. I am worthy of being here. Continue to feel and sense and feel that you're sending these thoughts to the chakra. I can have this body. I can have this life. I am here. I belong here. I am here. I belong here. Goddess, when you're ready, take several deep breaths, feeling very grounded and aware of your whole body as well as still connected to the root. We will do much more in the coaching sessions that are coming up in the six week session that I will be leading. If you'd like to know more about it, please register for a free webinar I will be doing. And the link should be below. It is coming up very soon. This will be a repeating and an ongoing program, so I don't wanna mention specific dates, but registration is now open. And this is the lowest cost if you register early. And there's also a bonus, which I've mentioned only to people in my tribe. But if you are among the first few that register, you will receive a bonus. I am not going to share it here. I'll share it also on the webinar. The webinar is coming up in the next few days. The best way to find out is to click the link below the video so that whenever you watch this video, you will have the right information. Thank you so much, Goddess. It was a pleasure to be here with you. Hope you have a blessed day. Namaste. The divine within me honors that divine within you. Bye-bye.